Tonight's headlines are brought to you by McDonald's. Good evening, Commonwealth, and thanks for watching the Channel 2 News. I'm Sally Limis. Let's take a look at tonight's top stories. The administration says out with the old and in with the new. All local officials may be replaced. Also tonight, a male confesses to police of multiple crimes. And economic experts to speak with community members this week. And sports, runners to your mark, get set and go. Stay with us, we have these stories and more up next. Everybody feel it come around with the rhythm, it's a sound. If you feel it come around with ground with ground, everybody feel it come around with the rhythm, it's a sound. Everybody get down when we give it to you. Everybody feel it come around with the This burger looked at one slice of melted cheese and said, more cheese. It looked at pickles and said, also onions. It wanted to be more than hot. It wanted to be juicy. This is the Quarter Pounder with cheese. If you thought one napkin for the Quarter Pounder with cheese was enough, it's not enough. Good day to the WAMI and good evening, Commonwealth. Today is Monday, February 20, 2023. It's a holiday in the Marianas today, President's Day. All right, now topping tonight's newscast, Governor Palacios calls for the termination of CUC's executive director and its board members. Let's take a listen. Governor Arnold Palacios has written a letter to the Environmental Protection Agency and the Commonwealth Utilities Corporation Board expressing his commitment to appoint a new and qualified executive director. Gary Camacho has been the executive director for over seven years now. He actually first held the position in 2015 as acting director when the position was still vacant. A stipulated order requires CUC to hire an executive director with certain educational and professional background, such as a master's degree and 10 years experience in senior management. In 2017, former Governor Ralph Torres asked the NMI Federal Court to waive the stipulation and allow Camacho to officially fill the position after several attempts to find a qualified executive director. Governor Palacios stated in his letter that he is not supporting the joint stipulation and is objecting the renewal of Camacho's contract. Palacios will also be appointing new members to the CUC board. Tinian businessman Philip Mendiola Long is the first appointee, and the governor says three more is to come. In court news, Judge Joseph Camacho finds probable cause to officially charge a man who admitted to committing several crimes. 35-year-old Johnny John Bassienti is charged with three counts of assault and battery, burglary, vandalism, and three counts of disturbing the peace. 
Vassienti was initially arrested for burglary and vandalism after he was caught inside the Guanzu restaurant in Garpen during closed hours. Vassienti and the owners of the restaurant got into a struggle and the victim sustained some minor injuries. Vassienti fled in a getaway vehicle. Police then conducted an investigation and searched the home of Vassienti. Detectives identified and recovered several stolen properties from other burglary and theft incidents. Vassienti confessed to multiple crimes he committed this year, some of which have not been reported yet. Police continued to find numerous stolen properties, all of which were recovered and positively identified by several victims. An arraignment is set for March 6 at 9 a.m. before presiding judge Robert Naraha. Bastienti is remanded back into the custody of the Department of Corrections. An exclusive insight to some of the NMI's most pressing economic issues. A meeting you might just want to join. It's called the Saipan Chamber of Commerce Economic Forum, a first of many to come. Chamber Board President Joe Guerrero. Kim and I and, and Director Alex Sablon attended the Guam Chamber of Commerce uh, Small Business Economic Outlook uh, last month and uh, with the intent that the Chamber would also do one in the CNMI. And so what we want to do is do this annually. So this is our first of, of uh, annual economic forum. The forum will feature several panelists to discuss their subject matter, such as Dave Berger, who will speak on tax, Gloria Cavanaugh, who will speak on tourism, Matt Delon Guerrero, who is a CNMI economist, and much more. We're also inviting the legislature and the administration to be there uh, and anyone that has you know, uh, a stake in this community and be able to ask questions, right? ask questions and learn learn from each other. Every, every, every one of the panelists has a sort of an area of interest and we really need to be in the same room to start discussing because many of the programs affect each other. Guerrero says this is a unique opportunity for the community to come together and learn about pressing economic issues. Tickets for the event is actually going pretty quick um, and so uh, it's still open, it's still available for purchase on our website, which is uh, sipenchamber.com. You can find it under the events calendar and you can register for there. on there. Um, you can also call our office um, and we're happy to help with the RSVP on that. Um, the event is set for this Wednesday, February 22 at 9 a.m. at the Kensington Hotel. Children who are below six years old and are under the NAP program can pick up their PEBT benefits this week. The PEBT distribution on Saipan will be issued based on the current NAP case ID number. Those with the case record ID number ending with 1 through 3 can pick up their benefits on Tuesday, February 21st. 4 through 7 is scheduled for Wednesday, February 22, while 8 through 0 is scheduled for Thursday, February 23. Issuance will begin at 8 a.m. until 3 p.m. via drive-thru. A violet ID is required. The maximum benefit is $199. Value for each child will depend on how long they were in the program. The value is $8.28 per day. Students who have not picked up benefits from December of 2022 are welcome to pick it up at this time. For more inquiries, you can call the PEBT call center at 670-287-3063. All right, coming up, we meet the new Homeland Security Chief. Stay tuned. Fast, fun, and easy. That's how your home Wi-Fi should be. So start with an internet plan that fits your budget. Introducing your home Wi-Fi starter pack, also known as WISP. Enjoy up to 25 megabits per second for as low as $35 a month, plus a free router with your wireless subscription. That's hours of movies, games, social media, and more endless fun. Get your Wi-Fi starter pack today only at Docomo Pacific. Better together. Additional conditions may apply. It's okay to take a friend or parent's medication. It came from a doctor, right? Using someone's prescription is really risky. 
Taking any drugs for which you have not been medically screened is not only dangerous, but taking an opioid that was not prescribed for you is also illegal. Never borrow and never share prescribed medication. Your life and your loved one's life could depend on it. Talk to your doctor about prescribed opioids. Never mix with alcohol and remember, never borrow, never share. It only takes a little to lose a lot. This project was supported by a grant from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention and the Commonwealth Healthcare Corporation. Contents are solely the responsibility of CHCC and do not necessarily represent the official views of the CDC or the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Green sea turtles and hawksbill turtles call the Mariana Islands home. They are an important part of the marine ecosystem. They are under threat and they are protected under CNMI law. Keep plastic out of the ocean. Keep vehicles off the beach. Use the sea turtle stranding hotline if you see poaching activities or if you see a turtle in trouble. Call 287-8537 and save a turtle. Welcome back to the Channel 2 News. A retired lieutenant colonel with an extensive background is selected to lead a critical department for disaster relief and national security. Franklin Babauta has been appointed the special assistant for the CNMI Homeland Security and Emergency Management. Babauta has over 25 years of experience in the United States Army, Army Reserves, and the Guam National Guard. He was deployed to Iraq and Afghanistan and has served on peacekeeping missions in the Philippines, Malaysia, and Australia. Babauta is also a former police sergeant, teacher, and member of the House of Representatives. Governor Arno Palacio says they were looking for someone with strong leadership background to head the department. Lieutenant Governor and I believe that Franklin would be the, the best candidate for that. He's had major leadership role in the Department of Pub Public Safety uh, as well as the military. And so he has those experience, plus he's, he's got the, the academic acumen also. And, and, and he's, a, he's a very patient people person. The mission of the CNMI Homeland Department is to protect lives from any threats, crimes, hazards, and emergencies. Homeland Security is really a critical uh, department in, in, in view of, of the uh, very recent disasters and, and also with national security. Uh, so he's, he's, uh, he's been in the military, so he's got those background in, in law enforcement as well as uh, responding to emergencies. So we, we, we thought that he would be the best fit for that. Babauta is the husband of Saipan Senator Selena Babauta. There's a saying that knowledge doesn't come with age. It comes with your pursuit for excellence. And this young Rhoda high schooler agrees. Ian Ladau received a special mention during the awarding ceremony for the 2023 high school mock trial competition on Friday. Ladau is a 12-year-old freshman and one of the youngest students to participate in this event. But she believes age is just a number and doesn't mean much. To be honest, I never really thought of it that way. I was just surrounded with like people I'm at the same maturity level with and I'm fine with that. Ladau is from Dr. Rita Hokuk Enos High School in Rhoda. She played the role of a witness and says participating in a mock trial takes a lot of work. I think it comes with a lot of work and it's pretty stressful because you have to do your schoolwork and everything else in your life along with it, but it's really worth it in the end because of all the experience and everything that you learn from it. The mock trial program is now going on its 25th year. It's an annual event sponsored by the CNMI Judiciary, members of the Bar Association, Historical Society, and the CNMI Public School System. PSS Commissioner Alfred Ada commended each student on a job well done. Last two days, we have witnessed their hard work, their determination, and advanced knowledge and skills in the legal system. Students, I am very proud of the ethics, the discipline, 
and expertise you have displayed. Continue to shine. Shine in the work that you do and give yourselves the credit that you deserve for going above and beyond normal expectations. Health is wealth, no matter how old or young you are. That's what these guys prove in your sports report that's up next. Need a new phone? Trade in now and get up to $500 off our best 5G devices. Trade in your older phone in any condition and step up to better savings and speeds only our 5G network can provide. Check out our website and catch up on the best mobile experience. Trade in now. Docomo Pacific, better together. I'm gonna make you an offer you can't refuse. Bring your friends in for the best night out at Godfather's Bar in Garibald. Sing along to your favorite hits with live music from the Gigolos. Godfather's has daily food and drink specials, like Taco Tuesdays. The best pizza on island every day of the week. Located on Palm Street in Garibald. promotes the culture of giving back. The foundation and its generous partners are committed to supporting programs that include health, education, and sports. Initiatives that promote arts and culture, the environment, and tourism will benefit our community and our residents. Giving back and making a difference will help ensure that the island paradise we call home will be a better place to live. Tonight, sports brought to you in part by Tan Holdings through the Tan Su Lin Foundation, making communities a better place to live. Buenos sports, sports fans. fans. blustery Sunday morning didn't stop these athletes to join the seventh Saipan Duathlon. Around 30 athletes joined the Triathlon Associations of the Cinemize 7th Duathlon at Bonsai Cliff yesterday morning. There are multiple categories for this race. The age categories for both male and female individuals, team relay, and top three overall winners. Track president Manny Stichon tells us more about this annual sports event. The event this morning is the 7th uh, Duathlon. It is a race that uh, uh, the participant will have to do the run. It's a run, bike, run event. Uh, first, the participant will run a 5 kilometer, then a 20 kilometer bike, and last 
segment is the uh, 2.5 kilometer run to finish the race. It's an exciting event because uh, this will be the start of our uh, event uh, triathlon association of CNMI events that will uh, will go on until the uh, selection of the CNMI team for the uh, Solomon Island Games. In the top three female individual triathlete Robin Spate finished the race in one hour, 24 minutes, and 53 seconds for the top spot. Shauna Brennefleck came second with a time of 1 hour, 26 minutes, and 14 seconds. Third place winner is Chemical McKagan. Her time is 1 hour, 29 minutes, and 19 seconds. Meanwhile, in the male individual division, Joel Bucco topped his division by conquering the race in 1 hour, 15 minutes, and 11 seconds. Second place is Mike Aparte with a time of 1 hour, 19 minutes, and 31 seconds. Fernando Cristobal finished third with a time of 1 hour, 20 minutes, and 6 seconds. For the team relay, the team of Shikegi Tenorio and Ren Ren Gaviola ruled the division with a strong finish of 1 hour, 11 minutes, and 10 seconds. Team Bobax Magic won second place. That's the team of Buboy Aguilar and Nomar Mangilao. Team Bobax Magic won second place. That's the team of Bubwe Aguilar and Nomar Mangalina, who finished the race in 1 hour, 29 minutes, and 40 minutes. Third place are the Brooks sisters. Sisters Haley and Heather teamed up and completed the race in 1 hour, 34 minutes, and 11 seconds. Here are the rest of the winners in their age category. In the male below 30, JP Pangalina in first place and Kim DeLupo for the second place. JR Barrios will the 30 to 39 years old. In the 40 to 49 years old, triathlete Leo Wanya finished first and second place is Jess Garigles. Meanwhile, despite of leg cramps during the bike segment, Raimundo Tolentino finished the race and rode the 50 to 59 age category. Hats off to these two gentlemen who proved to us that age is just a number. Edgar Abalas and Pontiano Carotin run first and second place, respectively, in the over 60 category. In the 30 to 39 female individual, another triathlete, Kathy Rizilla, finished first, followed by Kerry Bauer for the second place. In the 40 to 49 female individual, J.M. Felipe finished first, followed by Pamela Walsh and Sheila Mabutas for the third place. The Triathlon Association of the CNMI would like to thank the participants, sponsors, and volunteers for this event. In behalf of uh, the Triathlon Association of CNMI group, we would like to give our uh, thanks to the Tan Holdings uh, Tan Holdings Company and to the ITNE for giving us the uh, full support uh, in uh, holding our events and uh, the coming events that we'll have. Uh, by the way, uh, next March we'll have uh, another event which is the Aquatlon event. Also, uh, we'd like to uh, give thanks to the uh, participants, to all the participants and also the volunteers who help us in uh, taking care of uh, the route and the arranging everything about the race. Saipan Cyclers hosted a time trial bicycle race last Sunday. Let's take a look. Ten teams of two individuals each competed in this year's first bicycle team time trial race. 
the team has to complete three laps starting at the last command post to Marpy Landfill, then turn around and proceed to Bronzai Cliff, then head to Camille's apartment as the turnaround point and back. Team number three of Hernan Cristobal and Mike Aparte completed the race in 1 hour, 16 minutes, and 26 seconds, winning first place. The second team to cross the finish line is team number five of Rolando Gacayan and Rod Gonzalez with a time of 1 hour, 16 minutes, and 47 seconds. Your third place winner is team number two of Renato Barros and Renren Gaviola. Barros and Gaviola finished the race in 1 hour, 18 minutes, and 23 seconds. This event is organized by the Saipan Cyclers headed by Jay Deco with the help of his friends and some fellow cyclists. <laughs> I'm Dre, one of the personal trainers here at Goat's Gym, and today we're going to show you a Bulgarian split squat, a fantastic lower body exercise that should be a main staple in your training. Now the first thing we want to address is the rear foot placement. Now whether it's toes on or toes off, just find what's comfortable for you. The bigger issue we want to tackle is the height of the box or bench. You see when you set up on a box or a bench that's too high, that inherently puts an aggressive stretch on the front of your hip. Oftentimes, that sensation will take away from the working leg, the leg that's on the floor. And when you start to add load in this faulty position, you're bound to run into some problems, particularly if you got some mobility restrictions. So Jamila's gonna set up, she's gonna descend with control, and from there, just stand tall.
And for your KSP and weather report, tonight partly cloudy with isolated showers, east wind 11 to 17 miles per hour with gusts up to 21 miles per hour, high 85, low 74, humidity at 74%. Tomorrow, mostly sunny with isolated showers, east, northeast winds 13 to 16 miles per hour with gusts as high as 20 miles per hour. High 85, low 75, high surf advisory remains in effect, large breaking waves of 8 to 10 feet in the surf zone on the north and east facing reefs of the Mariana Islands until 6 p.m. this evening. For your marine forecast, combined seas of 9 to 12 feet as a long period northerly swell, a stronger easterly swell and elevated winds. Wind waves continue to impact the coastal waters. A small craft advisory remains in effect until 6 p.m. tonight. Wind and seas begin to decrease today and should drop below hazardous levels by this evening. Sunrise will be at 6.39 a.m., high tide 7.13 p.m., low tide 2.04 p.m., and the sunset, you can catch that at 6.22 p.m. And there you have it. That is your President's Day edition of the new sports and weather here in the Marianas. We hope you have a great night. We'll see you on Wednesday with more.